the former World Series of Fighting and PFL heavyweight champ, Blagoy Baga Ivanov, coming back after just a week shy of two years away from the cage. He's going to be taking on Brazil's Pesao Marcos Rogério de Lima, a guy who decided, you know what, my job's probably on the line. I should go ham in my next one. And knock out Ben Rothwell, BKFC Zone. And if you don't believe what I just said, it's fact. And I know it's crazy, and it seems crazy coming out of my mouth. It's like when Tim Tebow tried out for the MLB. You know, you're like, really? This the next thing you're doing? And then he did it for a long time in the minors. He was committed. But, but the craziest part about this... I don't this... question Ben Rothwell's commitment to BKFC. I just question the sport. Ben Rothwell hadn't been knocked out since UFC 104 when he took on uh, Cain Velasquez. That was his first knockout loss in many, many, many years. And for Marco Sergio de Lima, here's the weirdest part about his career. He comes into the UFC off the Ultimate Fighter Brazil at heavyweight. He fought Shoeface there. You know, PFL champion Shoeface. And listen, Rogério has his first fight in the UFC at heavyweight, mingles at light heavyweight, but weighing in at the limit was a problem. So he ends up moving back to heavyweight. Here's his record in the UFC between those two divisions. This is very important. 5-2 and two at heavyweight, 3-3 three and three at light heavyweight. I think it's safe to say that heavyweight is his division. Now, for Rogério de Lima, his striking is great. His Muay Thai is amazing. His takedown defense is bad. His bottom game is bad. His first move back up to his feet is terrible. Blagoy Ivanov, 2008 World Combat Sambo champion. He beat Fedor that year in Combat Sambo, a guy who was very good at, well, Combat Sambo. And for Blagoy Ivanov, coming into the UFC, I know he's 2-3. and three. I know he's got that loss to Junior Dos Santos in a five-round main event to make his debut. But you look at it and the wins that he has. He was able to get uh, a win against Ben Rothwell by decision. Beats Tai Tuivasa by decision. That was a great fight, too. Loses to Derek Lewis by split decision. I thought Derek Lewis won that one. Loses to Augusto Sakai by split decision. That was the biggest fence grab ever at the end of that fight by Augusto Sakai. I still thought he beat Blagoy, though. But realistically, though, for Ivanov, he's a steady striker. And when he works in his wrestling and his grappling, amazing top pressure. Not the heaviest of heavyweights, but realistically coming into this fight... I think he's at a huge speed disadvantage to Marco Sergio de Lima. It just depends on how much grappling are we going to see out of Ivanov two years away from the octagon training at Extreme Couture. I brought up a lot of basketball references, so I'm going to keep the train going. Blagoy Ivanov, to me, is like watching DeAndre Jordan the past couple of years. He was really good, and he still does the same thing. It's just athletically, he's not the same guy he used to be. And I really worry about these two years off, because he was looking slow in his last couple of losses. And I know they were close fights, but still, Blagoy Ivanov was brought into the UFC as, this could be a top 10 guy. He's going to be in the rankings for a long time, might even fight for a title one day. He has two good wins, I would say, in the UFC, but he definitely has... Has not been the fighter that we thought he would be upon his entry and somehow he's still ranked even though he's lost the last two fights and he hasn't fought in a shade under two yeah. years the great thing about the heavyweight division though right now is it does feel like it is having somewhat of a resurgence there's a lot of young fighters right now working their way up the ranks so a lot of these older fighters who've just sort of been able to stay around the top 15 due to inactivity are starting to get forced out which is really nice but it's a good point you bring up even i'm still in that top 15 and for delima to me, he's kind of higher up in the division just because he has been more relevant as of late. But there's really no other way to cut and dry this fight other than Delima's going to... He's way better on the feet. It's not even close. He has leg kicks. He has thunderous power. He has really good hand speed too, especially compared to Blagoy Ivanov. But every minute that ticks off the clock, it's just going to get a little bit harder for him and a little bit harder for him. And the thing about Delima is... He's not a great striker when he moves forward. It's weird. He likes it when his opponents come towards him a lot of the time. Then he'll plant and try to throw. And then after he throws, he'll start to flurry forwards. I do think that's going to be a trouble for Blagoy Ivanov, who does tend to just sort of plot forward, not be all that defensively sound sometimes. I could see Ivanov just walking into a big shot, kind of like how Ben Rothwell did. But again, it's so wild to me how confident I was in Ben Rothwell going into the Hajerio Delima fight. Just stylistically, a really bad matchup for Delima, you'd think. A guy who has great cardio, good striking defense, hadn't been knocked out in like a decade leading up to that. But Delima hit him with one clean shot and hurt him, and then immediately took him out with the next flurry. So, I do feel like Delima at heavyweight, he's at least found his right body type for this division, because he was at 205, missed weight a few times, weighed in way heavy against OSP when he fought him. To, yeah, which is really bad. 
And uh, ever since in heavyweight, he has gone up and down in weight a little bit, but I do feel like as of late, he's really figured out, okay, how can I make the most of my body type at this division? But again, this fight to me is just going to be extreme one-way traffic one way over the other. It's either Dilema kicks off even on his front leg and hits him with an overhand left, or Blagoy's just going to rinse and repeat his takedowns over and over and over again. But the thing is, Dilema fights a lot like Tai Tuivasa, and he's not as good, of course, he's slower. But Ivanov did look really good against Tai Tuivasa. He ate some big shots, but he even hurt Tai on the feet in that matchup. So Ivanov does have the experience against the higher level of competition. So you have a look at this fight. Again, Blagoy Ivanov, some sites might still say AKA, but he hasn't trained at AKA in a really long time. He's out of Extreme Couture. And for Marcus Sagerio de Lima, he's training with the UFC and UFC adjacent land of misfit toys that have been cast away in Marcelo Golm, Bruno Oliveira, and another big name, Clinton Abreu, who did actually just pick up a big one with PFL last week. When it comes to the odds for this fight, even off open to minus 170, he's a minus 155 favorite. Sagerio de Lima open to plus 145, he's plus 127, so the odds are closing in. Matt, we have a look at the top all vote. Surprise us there to you. I'm going to say over under 65% Hegerio de Lima. I think Ivanov will be the favorite. You think so? And look at that. 693 total votes. is 73% Ivanov. 78% by decision for the 27% that have Hegerio de Lima. 40% by decision. 46% by knockout. Two big wins over Maurice Green, the crochet boss. And then, of course, Big Ben Rothwell in a row for Hegerio de Lima. Matt, what's the pick here? I like Blagoy Ivanov in this matchup. Again, it's not the sexiest pick, and if he wins, it's probably not going to be in the most aesthetically pleasing way. There's going to be a lot of clinch control, a lot of takedowns that probably don't result in submissions, just a lot of top control, I believe. De Lima, again, if you take away that one big punch he lands on Ben Rothwell, you do think about his career quite a bit differently leading up to that fight. And I'm trying not to get too caught up in De Lima's last performance. I know the power is there. I always knew the power was there. I just feel like that was one of the best versions you'll probably ever see of him. Now, I worry about Ivanov with his two-year layoff. I worry about the speed disadvantage he's going to bring into this fight. But I do like the well-rounded game of him. And he can eat a big shot. He's been able to do that throughout his career. So if he does get into a bad position, if he does get cracked by a big shot, I'm going to trust his chin to at least be able to eat a couple. And he'll be able to withstand that big storm wind decision. Realistically, one of these two fighters has beaten a former UFC heavyweight champion in the past. Matt, do you know which fighter it is? Uh... We'll go even off. He beat Rico Rodriguez, Cam Soda MMA's True. own Rico Rodriguez. I do have Blagoy Ivanov here. And listen, again, it's not the most fun pick. Blagoy's been off for a very long time, so it definitely does give you cause for concern. Somehow, younger fighter in this matchup, so that's a little bit weird. But again, with the abilities to take down Hagerio de Lima, whose takedown defense isn't all that great, and his first move off his back is not all that great, I do have to go with Ivanov. So both of us here are going with Bulgaria's own former combat sambo world champion, Former World Series and PFL champion, albeit PFL was just one fight when the promotion switched names. Blagoy Ivanov, let us know down below in the comment section who you have. And listen, two big fights up at the top that aren't the, for the title. You've got Michael Chandler taking on Tony Ferguson and Cowboy Cerrone taking on Joe Lozon. So you're not going to want to miss it. Keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks. We always say, let's, let's get, get into it. it.